All right, Th section 3.8 takes us kind of back up the object hierarchy to the higher level. Declaring a class does not create the object. The class is just an abstract description of what an object will be like if any objects are ever actually instantiated or created or, or our keyword new for the new object. You can create a class with fields and methods long before you instantiate any objects that are members of a class. In fact, doing class definition is going to be your first step to uh, a major project. And you need to know what all of the uh, attributes are, etc., to build that class. Two-step process creates an object that is an instance of a class. First, you supply a type and an identifier, just as when you declare a variable. Then you allocate computer memory for that object. And so employee, some employee, is that first step. Um, when you de declare an integer, some value, that you notify the compiler that an integer will ex name some value will exist, you reserve computer memory. But to allocate the needed memory for an object, you must use the new operator. So we don't have to do that for other data types. But for classes, uh, I'm sorry, for objects, we do have to specify the new operator to get it to allocate um, a position for it. Sets aside enough memory to hold the employee. So here's, again, a definition that would work for that using two steps. Um, you can also do it in a single statement, employee sum employee equals new employee. This is a little redundant to look at it this way, so doing it in a single step is always a better way to do it. Some employee becomes a reference to the object, the name of the memory address where the object is held. And this is one of those concepts where there's an object in memory and it has a location that we can reference and uh, every object name is a reference and that's a memory location and so we learned that it's now considered a reference type so I wouldn't dwell on this too much all the memory uh, Memory concepts are handled automatically by Java. In the olden days when computers didn't have a lot of memory, it was important to know every bit and byte of what's going on in memory. We've kind of gotten kind of lackadaisical and don't have to worry about that in our small programs in our classes. But uh, the consultant that used to visit my class last year who works in a, for a major corporation says they do have to worry about computer memory and run times. So, in a larger development environment, it does become important to pay attention to memory issues. Um, the equal sign up here is an assignment operator. So a value is being assigned to some employee in the declaration. And remember, employee is the class. New instantiates the object up from the employee class. <clears throat> The new operator is allocating a new unused portion of computer memory for some employee. The value that the statement is assigning to some employee is a memory address at which some employee is located. The employee method is a constructor, a special type of method that creates and initializes objects. You can write your own constructor for a class, and we're going to learn how to do that, and we're going to do a lot of that but Java will write one for you if you don't write one. The name of the constructor, and this is real important, is always the same as the name of the class whose object it constructs. So you're gonna, the first element you might see in a class has the same name as the class and will be called employee. Well, that's going to be your, your constructor or your default constructor. And we can have multiple constructors of the same name and we're going to learn about method overloading uh, later on. After an object has been instantiated, its objects can be accessed using the object's identifier, a, a dot and a method call. 
So if we have two objects, a clerk and a driver, each use set employee and get employee number one time. And so somebody sets up to a declare two employees application using those methods because they're public. And each of them has an employee object because the methods are not static. And so we have, let's set up our two objects. Employee clerk equals new employee and driver equals new employee. So our dot notation up here that it's mentioning is clerk dot set employee number. So the clerk is a specific employee. Driver dot set employee number is a spe specific object for, known as driver. So this dot notation lets us specify which one we're setting for and if we want to get it get it back out we have to use this something similar. Clerk dot get employee number and driver dot get employee number. So we will expand on that more as we move forward in the chapter and the following chapters. The next section on data hiding just extends what we were talking about on the last page. Within the declare to employees class, you must use the public methods set employee number and get employee number. And if you have to flip back and look at what those methods look like, go ahead and do that to be able to set and retrieve the value of employee num field for each employee because you cannot access the private employee number field directly. The employee number field, if you remember, was set as a private variable and it's local only to the class so you can't access that piece of information. But when you specify clerk, um, you would, you would have to do a get. You cannot access clerk.employee number. So this is not a valid chunk of code if, if you look at the text a little closer. A direct assignment statement would work which would violate the principle of object-oriented programming. Data hiding using encapsulation. So the data is hidden from us. We don't care how it was created. We just need to access it. Data fields should usually be private and a client application should be able to access them only through public interfaces. That's the class's public methods like the set and the get. And you can finish, finish that reading and watch this video. This was a great video on uh, objects.